to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. Inexplicable knowledge, vivid reoccurring dreams or nightmares of a time long before you were born, children who tell of chilling realistic tales of being somebody else before they came here. The phenomena of past lives was made popular by sensational books and TV specials, and both science and spirituality have struggled with the concept of past lives and life after death in general. Far from just being the product of New Age philosophy and spiritual beliefs, however, the phenomena has been studied with vast amounts of data gathered by real-world psychologists. Data, which seems to suggest a means of knowledge transfer beyond the physical capabilities of the experiencer, a great majority of which seems to be children from the age of two to four. Are these actual memories of previous lives? If not, then where might they originate? Can we possibly tap into the previous experiences from other lives? Join us as we look at the past life phenomena and some of the mysteries surrounding it in this episode of Wild and Weird Radio. Welcome back to Wild and Weird Radio, everybody. Uh, We are all back together as one big happy family. Jess is back off of assignment because you guys actually did the job last week and you went and liked, shared, and subscribed, and she no longer is on the cryptid hit squad. So Yep, we had a um, lot of likes and shares and subscribes because we got uh, a a lot of members that jumped in in on the uh, the YouTube guys, so keep it coming, keep it coming, keep it coming. Yeah, so go over, head over to Hellbent Hollers YouTube, like, share, and subscribe to that, then jump over to Wild and Weird Radio's YouTube, like, share, and subscribe there. Go and subscribe to this podcast you are listening to right now. Oh, and by the way, we are now listed on uh, Amazon's Tune In. So all you've got to do, mm-hmm. if you have a um, a uh, wiretap that lives in your house, all you have yeah. to say is, Alexa, play Wild and Weird Radio. And guess what's going to happen? You are going to get the latest and greatest Wild and Weird content coming through your wiretap yeah um because robots you know we couldn't beat them we figured we're gonna put them to work and just join them i mean might as well join them (laughs) can't can't hurt so our entire catalog's there uh you can go through and listen to all the episodes i'll play it straight from your alexa it's a fun little thing if you want to put this up right now just hold your phone up i'll tell it to do it now alexa play wild and weird radio guess what's getting ready to start happening guys (laughs) All right. That so we, is the magic of technology. We had a uh, rather slow news week, um, but we had some weird news. Uh, so some of the news was big. Um, not saying that we didn't have any big news. It was just kind of a slow news week. We didn't have as much content rolling in. There's a lot of, you know, global distraction going on. So there's, uh, you know, kind of like the Silver Bridge scenario. We're seeing a taper away from Mothman sightings, uh, but it's just all the weird stuff. It's kind of. Oh, they're still happening. They're still happening. Don't yeah, they're just not being reported this frequently. Yeah. So, uh, so there will Jess, be a massive you... influx, I'm sure. Go ahead. Oh, absolutely, Jess. Uh, you've got one for us to start us off. What do you What do you got? Well, there. I don't know if you guys have heard or not. There is a little bit of a, a disruption in Eastern Europe. I don't know. This is kind of like underground. What's going on? I don't know. Right. Breaking so, news. There's this thing going on in Ukraine. I don't know. Uh, so over in Ukraine, uh, obviously there is a serious situation over there. Uh, according to the Daily Star, uh, a few folks were in a firefight there. Ukrainians were in a firefight with Russians and they were under siege. It was looking pretty grim for them when they began to pray and a UFO arrived and engaged in a lightning attack on Russian forces, setting tanks ablaze and destroying them. Um, no other confirmation besides the Daily Star article, but yes, according to this story, 
there was some UFO intervention in the Russian-Ukraine conflict. Well, you know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of people asking questions almost on day one because they know that historically, if they're interested in UFOs, they know historically that anytime there's major conflict, there's always seems to be some kind of rash of sightings or uh, you know intervention, almost like the Foo Fighters during mm -hmm. World War II. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. it, I know it was already on everybody's mind. Now, Ron, what if uh, what? What have you heard so far about this one? Because I've, I've only read what Jesse was talking about. I haven't seen any other reporting, any other kind of mentions other, other than have, the lightning uh, attack. Yeah, I've seen a couple uh, that are coming through. Most of these things are coming through on like TikTok and uh, some yeah. of your other social media that isn't quite known for, uh, what should I say, uh, hard-breaking journalistic uh, accuracy. Um, you know, it, it's more for clicks and likes and, right. hey, subscribes. But, um, I mean, I will tell you this. There are some cases uh, through history where there was intervention by what could be extraterrestrials, okay? Uh, I mean, shoot, the United States is one of those things because of the whole Washington thing. You, you know this right. as well as I do, that Washington, you know, before he, uh, he crossed and, and, you know, the whole thing— it, We'll go into that one day in the future, but uh, but suffice to say that yes, um, these things have been reported throughout history. But this time, I'm kind of thinking this might be something called propaganda. Now, kids, propaganda is something that uh, you may not have heard about. I don't know because I don't know if they teach it in school anymore, but they should. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking this might be something like that, guys. I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it could be. Um, I've seen a couple of other videos though, then I don't know. I don't know about those. Uh, there's one in particular that is very interesting. It'll probably show up this week. Uh, because you know, all this stuff is about to roll out. I'm telling you, we're just getting ready to get inundated with yeah. flying this and flying that. And you got to remember though, guys, every time that there's a conflict, things are seen. And sometimes those things turn out to be, uh, technology. Right. Uh, wherever it Weapons came from. that haven't exactly been talked about. Yeah. What, wherever, what better time to deploy yes. your latest and greatest than a war? We, so. we saw that with the Gulf War. Yeah. That's when the stealth fighter came out. That's when the stealth bomber finally was revealed. These things happen. And it's, you know, some people argue that that's why these conflicts do happen, because, you know, we get to uh, show off what we're up to. I think that's ludicrous, but either way, um, I, I would want I want to definitely keep up to date with these kind of sightings. So yeah, if you guys out there uh, on our talk page do see things like this, go ahead, share them over to the page. We're going to leave it open for this because it yeah. is relevant. So this isn't you know any kind of propaganda on our part or your part. You're just reporting what you're seeing, and I'm saying that to Brandon because he's going to be the one who does it. <laughs> yeah, Brandon, our our sole surviving reporter of the uh, the this week here, um, Ron. He actually shared a good one, uh, and I think you also shared it as well. Um, tell us a little bit about what they found off the coast of Cuba. Oh, this was amazing. Uh, this, this is great. this is really cool. Yeah, this was a great story. It also goes right into uh, our last episode, doesn't it? Um, where we were talking about, you know, the possibility that there, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years before, you know, what we have as as our historical record, there was more advanced technology here. There was more advanced cities here. And they literally just found the remains of what might be a 6,000-year-old city completely submerged yep. uh, off the west coast of uh, Cuba. And if you look at it, it's pyramids. Yeah. It's and always roads. pyramids. <laughs> it's pyramids. Okay. And it's not just pyramids. It's a whole city complex. They only have a small swath of it that they've actually shown in the image so far, but they estimate that they're, it, it could be big. It could be really big. So uh, some people are going as far as saying, you know, this is Atlantis. I was I mean, going to say, that's what I've seen so far yeah. is that there are some folks saying I would, this is in fact Atlantis. I would put my money on it not being Atlantis, but it may be uh, the legend, uh, legendary city of Mu. There are those who believe that Atlantis was one and Mu was the other. So there's there are other stories, right? They're not the same. They're not the same city. They're completely well, the good thing, separate. The good thing about this is that what it will do is it is going to further advance funding of research into these types of environments mm -hmm. that we can't see necessarily. 
using technology like LIDAR and sonar mm-hmm. to discover these uh, these huge structures because there were Mayan structures that were discovered just, you know, a year and a half ago, an entire pyramid. That's right. That oh, in the jungles, yeah. Yeah, yes, they yeah. the jungles, yeah. They've completely yes. been taken over by the jungle. And yep. what's wonderful about these cities, guys, is they're not little buildings. These aren't little, you know, woodland uh, habitats that we would expect, you know, primitives to be growing. These are huge megalithic complexes. Right. Just like we see around the world, Pumapunku, uh, you know, uh, all the wonderful places, uh, Gobekli Tepe. It's just, this is perfect. It makes me happy is what I'm saying. This this kind of stuff makes me happy. When we find 400 meter wide and 40 meter tall you know, yeah. stone structures under the water. It makes me happy because it's like, hey, there it is, you know, 6,000 years ago. All right, that works. How'd that happen? Well, now I've I've got something else that makes you guys happy too, uh, to, to tell you guys and to share with everybody here. Um, there waffles? Was, that, it's almost as good as waffles. Uh, In fact, it might even be better than waffles depending on the syrup you use. But... <laughs> Uh, a good friend of ours named Wyatt, he goes to Sherman Middle School, and he did a history project on Bigfoot. And he interviewed me. Yes. Uh, we, we gave him a copy of the Salamander casts, and he put those out on display with his history project. He actually won the school history, uh, his one first place in the school, and went to counties. And he's still placed in counties, but it stopped at county, so he's he's not going to go up to the regional or state, whichever one comes next. Um, But he did a fantastic job. He used uh, Dr. Russ Jones' new book, Appalachian Bigfoot. Uh, He he used our information that we had uh, shared with him through the interviews. He used the Tinney Report. Um, All kinds of great stuff. And uh, just being able to work with the kids on on doing stuff like this and helping them grow their interest in this field in general is one of the things that we absolutely love doing. Um, Wyatt, if you are listening, uh, I'm pretty sure you're... Your mom told me that you listened to Wild and Weird Radio. In case you didn't see the post, you, my friend, win a pass for what you've done and all your hard work. You win a pass to one of the Wild and Weird workshops of your choice. Uh, and and just come have a good time, man. Uh, we can't wait to hang out with you and get you out in the woods. It's going to be fun. So uh, to kind of wrap that up, guys, um, if you also, are Also, can we give Wyatt a big round of applause? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everybody, everybody here Good and in Radio close, Land. Wyatt. Good job, Wyatt. <laughs> everyone, everyone. And uh, let's do the one last story, which harkens back to last week's episode as well. And yeah. last week's episode, if you didn't listen to it, uh, there's a lot of people who have listened to it. I think it scared a few people, but that's good because it was supposed to. Um, maybe it'll 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 wake you up. I don't know. But this one certainly was weird because it fell right after that episode aired. Um And I'm just going to read the very first part of it. Uh, For a few tense days in January of this year, astronomers were tracking a near-Earth object cruising toward Earth with a trajectory showing it hitting the planet in 2023. It was actually scheduled to hit uh, the Earth on July 4th, 2023. So, Independence Day, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, Was it going to hit the White House, too? I don't know. I think (laughs) it may have. You know, But here's the funny thing. Um, they were watching this thing. Uh, apparently, uh, there was a dramatic week there, and in the dark of the full moon, uh, it outshone the potential impactor while they were observing it. When the moon moved out of the way, the telescope looked again, and all of a sudden, this this asteroid is not where it was. So it moved. Something moved it. It moved, or either the... Uh, calculations were wrong. Um, yeah, something happened. So one could almost say it was deflected. One could possibly say it was deflected unofficially. <laughs> I mean, we it, can't say it was deflected, but it sure seems. seen force or energy field, perhaps? Yes, maybe, possibly. Maybe it was those, uh, what, are the, what are those ones that they say, well, you know what, with all this crap going on in Ukraine, we might be screwed because... As I recall, there were some some bowls over there that they uh, that they used to say that were deflecting asteroids. Um, just saying, you know, that might be a That's reason. To, I did not know that. 
yeah, yeah, I believe that's where those bowls were. Uh, we'll have to actually look that up, but yeah, uh, that's a really cool story, actually. You'll, you'll have to read that if you haven't heard that one. Yeah, I have to check that one out. So Ancient, ancient technology. So, Jess, we know that uh, you you missed out on a couple weeks here. Um, I did. And do you want to fill the listeners in a little bit on what you've got coming up for Hellbent Yes, Holler? absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I uh, just put out a video, um, and it was a video that we did we filmed before we went out of town. Um, so that just came out. It is it's a video. It's where we go out. It's my longest video I've ever put out on my channel. Um, but we go out and we do one of our investigations in the woods in one of our research areas. And we pretty much get bluff charged. So um, it's a really exciting video and it's a good watch. If you guys want to go check that out on my YouTube channel, Hellbent Holler. But the reason we were out of town, uh, I don't know if the guys mentioned it or not, but I was, Joe and we I. We just told them you were out on a summit because, you know, uh, the, okay. yeah, they, the, but... the like, listens, and subscribe dropped a little bit the week before you left. Okay. So but we it came had, back up. So it, it came back up. It worked out. Because I wasn't so... here. That's why. <laughs> um, oh. So Joe and I went to the Land Between the Lakes. And we spent an entire week there um, just really, really doing a thorough investigation of the land between the lakes. And uh, we filmed the whole time. We were there for an entire week. And we got some really, really crazy footage. Uh, we experienced a lot of strange weather events while we were there. Um, it ran the gamut from yeah. a tornado to an ice storm all within a week. And one day the temperature was 65. The next day it was 28. Um, so we had a lot of really, really strange things happen while we were there. We did a lot of, we debunked some things. We found out some new things. We had some really insane experiences. Um, things are a lot more complicated than initially thought about the land between the lakes, but there will be a series coming out from, uh, myself very, very soon that will have everything that we went through on that trip. So, uh, keep an eye out for that, and uh, I think you guys are really, really, really going to enjoy seeing what happened through the course of that week. I Paranormal that... Storm Chasers, I believe, is the uh, <laughs> yeah. is, is the title. <laughs> I know that I can't wait to see the footage. It's I, I just can't wait to watch it. I know it's going to be great. Um, yeah, and we were we were very, very, very thorough. Um, we we I don't I think we covered we covered over a hundred miles on foot over the week you know um we just wow we, we just did we did it we did the thing so um i don't know if we're going to go back to the lbl after this for a while because that was a lot um a lot of really really disturbing things happened too so um you guys keep an eye out for that it's going to be it's it it might kind of shake up things in the crypto yeah. world um hey that's so. what that's what we like we yeah. you know when when the truth comes out you can't Data doesn't care about your feelings. You've heard me say that a thousand truth. times on that's, this show. It's the truth. Yes. And yeah. uh, data yes. doesn't care about your feelings. It, nope. it Whatever you guys found up there, uh, whatever comes out from all this, man, it's going to be amazing. So you guys need to make sure to keep an eye out. Yeah. It'll be shared from Hellbent Holler, of course, but you're also going to be able to find it on all of the media outlets that, that we run over Wild and Weird as well, um, because it's just fantastic content, second to none. So um, we're also going to be taking a trip because, uh, guys, there. if anybody here is listening is familiar with the Wanberry case, we've got activity up there again, guys. And we have two casts that uh, we, we're going to go investigate and we're going to go back out and take a look and see what all is going on up there this time of year again because we're coming up. Uh, we're actually just past the one-year anniversary. We are past the one-year anniversary with activity occurring yeah. at the exact same time again. Uh, yep. And this time we have uh, great boots on the ground up there, um, we do. which is just fantastic. And uh, just having, can't wait, can't wait to get up there. Having somebody that we we've been able to train ourselves on how to collect data, just it, it's awesome. It's it's great to that, to see. That takes a lot of the work out of it for you that you don't have to go back sure and kind of right. correct these things. So yeah. So we're we're going to be able to get up there. We're going to take a look around. We're going to go and evaluate the uh, the data that's been collected over the last two months now, um, because there've been another rash of sightings in the area. So you guys are familiar with the area. 
We called it Wineberry. We came out publicly, what, about six or eight months ago, I think, and we told everybody where it was actually in Polk Gap area mm-hmm. um, because this was the you know, turf of the alleged Polk Gap monster, which was uh, a, basically responsible for a string of Bigfoot sightings all the way from the 50s into the 80s. And this same area still has activity going on. Um, but uh, we're, let's go ahead and dive into our topic that we've got. That's the end of the news is what he's saying, guys. So let's yeah. wrap it up. That's the end of our news and updates. So, uh, so this week we're diving into the topic of past lives. Now, if you've watched any form of paranormal tv unsolved mysteries or anything like that since the 1970s you're probably going to be somewhat familiar or at least heard about it uh because it does tie in somewhat to the reincarnation theories um but it's a phenomena that people will have sudden memories or flashbacks that contain memories that they say were theirs from another life or memories that they'll respond to as being not theirs but they're very vivid like they'd lived in another time period before or experienced certain things now this this entire realm of study started long ago and ron if you want to go ahead and take it away there i know that you've got some mm. of the roots here for the well, past life phenomenon. you know it wasn't that long ago but Dr. Ian Stevenson is, uh, is who's credited with the first uh, actual, I guess, real study, like scientific type study of this whole thing. He's a psychiatrist uh, from the University of Virginia School of Medicine. And the, what's really amazing about this guy is that um, he pretty much cataloged uh, close to 3,000 cases uh, of possible uh, reincarnation type phenomena. Uh, past life phenomena or whatever you want to call it. Um, there's, there's many, many cases. And some of the cases that you guys will be reading are, he actually, uh, you know, he studied those. Like he, he is one of the lead researchers on that. But what's really cool about it is he had found several uh, different traits uh, in different uh, parts of his data that kind of showed a pattern to this whole thing, which also makes it kind of hard to debunk. So, you know, uh, you're dealing with something that's typically, uh, this is typically between age of two and four. That's when most of it happens. Uh, and they'll just kind of start talking about their previous life uh, and, and events that led up to their death and just weird stuff that they should not know whatsoever. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting stuff, like I said. And I think one of the weirdest things about the data that he did collect was that he found out that uh, in almost three quarters of the cases, the previous personality, that's what he called the, the past person. You know, that was a good term. Um, they died relatively young. They were also typically uh, a traumatic death, uh, unexpected deaths. Um, and a quarter of them died before the age of 15. And on average, this is the weird part. On average, the previous personalities died four and a half years before the birth of the child whom they were now associated with. And now that was something that was being consistently seen, right? That was something oh, yeah. that was across the data. They're seeing they were, 3000 they chart close this. to 3000 cases. Yeah. That, that right there is, is bizarre, you know, uh, and this is one of those topics where it can, it tends to ruffle a lot of feathers mm-hmm. and, it's because, you know, the, the religious aspects of these uh, phenomena, uh, it just really shuts people down and they don't want anything to do with it. They, they will try to, you know, pray the demonic away or something like that. But it's, well, it's, if, they, if, if they don't understand it, it's, it's demons. Yeah, so. that's what it gets chalked up to a lot of the times. But these these ones with kids, it's just you can't get away from the fact of trying to figure out how did these kids know this stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. one how does they have they have details that a, a child yeah. would have a child of that age would have no concept of whatsoever and they just express these details just very fluidly and it's something that a child of two to three would not even have a concept of mm-hmm. that's right now 
we we've talked about the kids just a little bit here, and I'm going to share one of the stories that I was told by a uh, a local shop owner in St. Albans, West Virginia. She's really open about her uh, her situation, and hers though it, it doesn't line up as much with the um, the four year four and a half year marker that was being seen by uh, the the doctors there at the Virginia University, but. Your, she was experiencing past life phenomena uh, and past life regressions in dreams that took her all the way back to her time in ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. And she could describe features and landmarks that are marred today and describe details. And she's actually hung out with um, archaeologists who have worked in Egypt and she's said, well, you should look over in this general area because this is where such and such was at. And then years later, it comes out that, oh, yeah, yeah, we I talked to so-and-so years ago, and then they finally got everything straightened up and lined out. Now here they're over here looking, and they found uh, artifacts indicating that there was some kind of a structure. And what do you do with that kind of information? Because she's talking about like experiences in ancient Egypt and then traveling into ancient uh, ancient Greece or Ale- and, and going around with all these different people and places and describing landmarks as if they were brand new and fresh and, and having these kinds of experiences and knowing how to do things like just being innately able to do specific tasks that are normally trained tasks, like, uh, something you would get certified in like woodworking or stoneworking, you know, how can you explain those? It, this is just one of those topics that you, s- you will run circles around you the entire time you look at it. Here we are. We're looking at this phenomenon. We're looking at these stories from people. We can't just outright say, no, you're making it up. No, you're crazy. Because there's actually universities that study this stuff on a regular basis. Um, and like Ron had mentioned, uh, the Division of Personality Studies at the University of Virginia, they they look at these as individual personalities. So we can't, we can't look at these stories. We can't look at these people who are telling these stories and tell them that they're just flat out making it up because there's too many details, too many good, solid details. Uh, that it just it comes out like you can't, how does a kid make that up? How does it, even an adult make that up? Who's never left the country. Who's wasn't educated. Uh, a lot also, of these, these, these things are taken very, very seriously. There is yeah. the division of perceptual studies at the university of Virginia that has dedicated their time, money, and efforts to studying this for over 50 years. And to this day, there is a contact form on their website if you would like to contact them if you think that you may be someone that is experiencing past life phenomenon or your child is um so this is ongoing to this day yeah right now with uh, with most of these cases most of the cases particularly that the university of virginia takes on they're all children mm-hmm. um you very very seldom will get adults that will show up into the program or, or to get looked at now what what they're looking for is kids who have experienced some kind of trauma uh, and then begin remembering these past lives. Or they just start talking and they're able to communicate and and tell you that, you know, you're not my mommy. That's one of the things. Or you're not my daddy. They'll, they'll, they'll you know be remembering their former parents and remembering their memories of the person that they're actually giving a name for in some cases and explaining who they are, how they died, where they were from, where they grew up, what their dog was like. Did they have a wife or a girlfriend or boyfriend? They'll give all these details, intimate details in great detail. And then when you start doing some research into it and you start to look these people up, you start to do some digging, suddenly there's a new case. You have this this thing that has built into now, oh crap, what do I do with this information? Do I actually go and try to tell this lady that my kid says that he was your husband like four and a half, five years ago? Mm-hmm. Or 25 a lot of times, years ago. 
Well, a lot of times with this work, they do bring in the family members of the person that they claim that the children claim to be. Um, yep. And sometimes that has uh, negative effects on everyone involved. And sometimes the, the, they completely cease having the, the past life regression or anything like that altogether. Um, so Dr. Jem Tucker had a, bo a book he wrote called Return to Life, and it was cases of American children who remember their past lives. And like Joe was saying, like a lot, a lot of their common things that are, they will come out of the kids' mouths about like quotes are that they had another mommy before, uh, or they say things like when I was big, I used to, and they would talk about maybe a job or a career they had, or they'd ask about their wife or their husband. Uh, they talk about the car that they drove, uh, where they used to live. And one thing that I thought was the most fascinating aspect of this study was they would ask the children, how did you get here? How did you come back? And they would, the researchers would commonly hear some variation of, I just went whoosh and came out of a portal. So you have very, very young children who are talking about traveling through portals. Um, and so it would, it was, it was always a thing about, I went whoosh or this, there was this bright light or this happened and I come through a portal. I thought that was a very, very interesting thing that kind of applied to a lot of things that we look into all the time with portals and, yeah. and you know, the, tra you know, transcendence and everything like that, that they, they come through some kind of portal and ju judging by the study that we're kind of getting data points on that this is this transference of energy and personality and everything seems to take about four and a half years. Yeah, which is crazy if you think about it. And, you know, there was actually a, a, almost like a list of possibilities like, uh, you know, ha has this happened to you? You know, yeah. uh, and there were some signs of that. It was, um, do you have persistent memories, uh, memories that you just can't shake, that don't quite seem right? Um, you can't quite explain them. Uh, have you had deep senses of deja vu? Well, I think we all kind of do that, right? Um, yeah. unreasonable fears, you know, are you afraid of, you know, whatever? Like I know when I was, I was always afraid of water. I mean, that was a big deal with me. Uh, cause I drowned in a past life. Um, do you get strange pains? You know, that there's that, um, uh, identify with another culture. No. Um, uh, have you, uh, what is it? Uh, inexplicable skills. You know, do, you, do yeah. you do anything, you know, that you shouldn't normally do? Nope, nope, can't just say I do that either, right? <laughs> um, you have inexplicable knowledge. Nope, not me. Um, <laughs> you have reoccurring dreams. I'm just out, okay? So if uh, anyone else has any of those, uh, you know, you might want to look into it. I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe you're well, trying to tell yourself something. You know, so, some of these tests too, they're geared to make you think like, oh, oh well, I've done, I mean, you could, I don't know. I mean, cold you, reading. It's a cold reading. Kind of it's thing. a cold read. It's a cold read exam. But, exactly, it, right? and, but this one was actually made off of not just a test. This was made off of that data that was collected. Right. These are some of the, the guidelines that they, they actually go through. I am more impressed with the, uh, with the kids. Well, you know, talk, the kids are the most impressive to me as well, because we yep. can be influenced as adults in any way. Now, Carl Jung, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with him, but he's got data going on this stuff all the way back to 1935. And uh, Jung is one of the professors that also influenced the doctors who are teaching at the uh, Virginia University, both Stevenson and um, the other guy can't remember his name ron just insert your voice here and <laughs> <laughs> then but carl jung was saying in in some of his notes that uh about the fifth or sixth year that a veil descends over these memories and the child's attention turns towards adapting to their outer surroundings forgetting these memories is probably nature's protective mechanism for ensuring a certain level of stability for the child if you believe that you were a king in ancient greece and then cleaning up your bedroom, this could create quite the hassle. His words. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah. So, you know, you're looking at this uh, this phenomena in a way, and that you're like, yeah, well, that kind of makes sense. Like, it, the, the child would have to eventually um, begin to shift. But is it coincidence that, say, the person 
uh, the personality, the previous personality, takes four and a half years to manifest into another child, which then at four and a half years, five years, begins to dissipate and fade away. So would this be a thing, like a, a a type of lingering phenomena or lingering energy or residual energy left from some kind of a traumatic experience that gets dumped onto this individual? Or is this truly a situation where it is that same soul, so to speak? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Jung also, you know, is the great uh, uh, propagator of the uh, collective uh, unconscious yeah. theory as well. And I think that we deal with a lot of that in uh, psychic study, um, you know, from channeling, all that stuff, right? It's it's all kind of related. Like there's this this pool of knowledge that's there, you know, and uh, there's many many possibilities as to this stuff. But well, that pool of knowledge has a name, doesn't it? Well, there's several names, but one of the most common names is the Akashic Record. Yes, uh, and that is uh, you hear that a lot in New Age talk these days. Yeah. But um, the Akashic Record is basically uh, this uh, spiritual level. Uh, where all knowledge, good, bad, indifferent, all of it, every thought that was ever thought, everything that was ever said, et cetera, et cetera, is stored and can be accessed through uh, various astral means uh, and psychic uh, connections and whatnot. So some think that, you know, maybe these kids are kind of tapping into something like that. Maybe their vibration just got just the right way, you know, and boom, they just tuned into that channel, you know, because, you know, that's one of the theories that, you can just tune into this knowledge and there you go. You download it, right? So is that possible? Some others theorize that at the time of death, that um, knowledge, uh, a person's uh, being, and this is kind of interesting because it kind of goes into the whole residual haunting aspect as well, um, that something can cause it, like trauma can cause these pockets in time or pockets on a uh, particular artifact, say, uh, or something. And all the, all the knowledge is there. It's in that one little spot. And then if the right person comes along, picks that up, or happens to see it, et cetera, it psh, downloads into them, and there they are. Uh, they just absorbed that person's, uh, I guess, existence, really, right? I mean, that's just a theory, but there are so many different possibilities as to what this could be. But some of these stories of these kids, man, I mean, whatever it is, we're not dealing with something common. I'm, I'm sorry. We, we can't say that this is something that we can just explain away uh, and say, oh, these are all fake or these are all hoaxes or it's cryptonesia. Um, cryptonesia, by the way, is one of the leading uh, possibilities in adults or at least in um, adolescents. Anyone who can read, basically. Uh, and that, that's kind of basically where you uh, may uh, have read something about someone. At some point, and you imprint that onto your own. Yeah, but you don't do it on purpose. You don't do it on purpose. You just like you, just you don't adopted. remember. Yeah, you don't remember it though. You don't ever remember reading that. You may have read like about all oh, this guy's life, you know, and then later on being like, oh well, that's, you know, it, for some reason your brain picks and says, oh well, you you kind of identify with that in a subconscious way, and therefore you know it's not a hoax. It's real to you. You you think it's very real, but. In uh, in some further research, you may find out that you're actually just recounting a story that you read when you were, say, you know, eight years old. You know, that's a very good possibility. I think it's kind of interesting that a lot of these, uh, a lot of the dissipation of the past life memories and a lot of people expressing, you know, details of their past lives, a lot of that seems to dissipate or go away around four or five years old. And I know that most people I've talked to about, you know, your earliest memory, seems like your earliest memory comes around three, four years old. Maybe yeah. that's, there's some sort of dividing line there where the previous personality lets go and then the new personality starts to form and take shape. I've got to ask you guys, have, have you seriously had any kind of memory like this? Anything that you can't quite explain as a kid? Um, nothing, nothing in that scope, but just being innately skilled to do certain things that I have no training in. Mm. I've got one for you. That's I'm relatively gonna, normal. I'm going to tell you a story. This anyway. is, this is going to be an exclusive because I've never shared this with anyone outside the family. It's another one of my weird stories. I swear one day I'm going to write a book. 
But anyway, we need to have is... a little song that plays right now, like a little no. sitting down with Uncle Ron. No, no. So and it shows was... you sitting down to put on your socks and rolling no. down your no. turtleneck like Mister Rogers. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> I remembered uh, we, we went we went to church um, in this this little there was there was this little white church right, and beside this church there was this old building that was beside the church. And anyone who knows me knows exactly what I'm talking about because you were there. Um, there was this old building that was there. And it was always in ruins at the time. And the windows were busted out and all this. So it was, it was very old. And um, I remember um, one point of uh, I had this dream. And I was actually in that building. And in that building there was uh an old stove and you know there was there was this um there were these desks and whatnot and it was an old school room is what it was well it turns out it was an old school it was an old school room now did i experience a past life thing no i don't think i did i think that i may have picked up a psychic impression and that may have been one of the first psychic impressions i ever picked up by the way so you can see how this could have been mistaken for a past life memory though you see what I mean when I, I keep saying that these may not necessarily be past life memories. They may be psychic impressions that people are picking up from places and, and objects. You know, uh, let's go over that one story of, uh, of the kid, uh, my favorite one of all. And I think everybody knows that story, by the way. And that is uh, James uh, Leninger. Now, the James Leninger story is just it's mind blowing. Um, I'm going to link to a full description of the actual case. So we've got the actual case file here. So you guys can look at that and it's in PDF format, which includes original sketches and whatnot. And it is mind blowing. Um, but James was born April 10th, 1998 guys. And, uh, as related by his parents, <clears throat> his first noticeable incident of this case occurred in February of 2000. So when he was 22 months old, his father took him to the uh, Kavanaugh Flight Museum outside of Dallas. And they were looking at some planes and they were looking at a uh, World War II exhibit. And he says that James just changed at that point. His, his demeanor changed. Uh, he started acting kind of, you know, just really excited hyper and excited, you know, but kids like planes, right? So right. We're, we're okay so far. Well, anyway, he does what any good father would do. Like Joe buys his kids dinosaurs. This guy buys his kid airplane, you know, a little toy airplane to play with. And he buys a video uh, about the blue angels. And the kid starts playing with the airplane, starts playing the video of the blue angels. And he keeps watching it over and over again. Again, Joe, tell us how that works over and over and over again well what happens is eventually it starts to rake at your psyche and you start going crazy because <laughs> i have to watch some of these videos on mass repeat mm. for eight hours at a time it's kind of like pow training almost it, yeah. it reminds me of that yeah. psyops yeah so anyway <laughs> um so he's he's watching this video though okay and uh the video that he's watching reminds remind your, yourself is of the blue angels it's not of world war ii this has nothing to do with world war ii but this uh image of the plane and whatnot this, this sparks this kid and he starts like all of a sudden taking this little toy airplane and he starts crashing it into the furniture okay he's crashing it into the furniture and he keeps saying things like uh pl planes on fire uh, engine something and little man uh, can't get out. Okay. I mean, yeah, see, those are all kind of disturbing things. Like, where you're not seeing that on the video. He like, didn't see that on the video, guys. Yeah. He, and he's, he's not reading. He's too young to read. He's, he's, a, he's a baby. And his dad's probably not going to be reading him horror stories of planes crashing. I'm just thinking that's not going to happen. Um, but it gets even crazier because. This one, on August 27th of 2000, when James was 28 months old, he tells his parents he had flown his plane off a boat. When his parents asked him the name of the boat, he said the Natoma. 
After the conversation, his father re researched it and online uh, for that word and found the description of the USS Natoma Bay, an escort carrier stationed in the Pacific during World War II. He printed out the information he found at the footer of the, the printout included the date uh, he did. It's also in figure one. You'll be able to see this in the stuff. Uh, James Parent asked him a number of times for the name of the little man in his dream, because that's what he referred to, the little man. He said uh, he responded with only me or James. Me or James. A uh, few weeks after that, his parents asked him if he could remember anyone else. And he said, Jack Larson. Okay, your kid starts making up names like this, you're probably going to have to, you know, look into this a little deeper, start, right? Start looking, start calling for help. And they did. They absolutely did. They reached out uh, to some researchers and whatnot. But what really gets amazing is his dad goes into just this amazing amount of research on his part. And he actually finds, um, he, he finds uh, some, uh, some veterans from the Natoma. And they verify that there was indeed a James. Um, they find out that a plane was shot down. And that James was literally, this was the only plane that got shot down in the battle. Uh, and it was shot down in the exact same way that this kid said it was shot down. The engine was hit head on uh, and they never found him. And this, uh, this is pretty hard to, pretty hard to deny. Okay. This is a pretty strong case. And it remains one of the best cases out there, by the way. So, Jesse, I know you had found another case as well that you wanted to go over and then also had a uh, another personal, more personal account that, that you would share. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a there's a famous case, uh, Ryan Hammonds. This is a, in 2009. There was a four year old boy who woke up screaming and just clutching his chest. And, you know, when his parents talked to him about what's wrong, what's happening, he said that he died of a heart attack, that he was dying of a heart attack. So he said that he, upon, you know, interviewing him more and more and getting more details out of him, um, they, he claims he died in Hollywood of a heart attack. And he kept insisting that he lived in Hollywood and he lived on a street that had rock in the name and that he had three sons and he was friends with Senator Fives. So his his mom started to look into Hollywood and, and try to piece together what he's talking about to kind of see if anything he was saying is legit or not. And uh, one day they were looking through a book and um, Ryan was over her shoulder and said, that's me. That's me and George. And it was a picture of actor George Raff and famous Hollywood agent Martin Martin. And the last Martin has a Y in it. Um, and it turns out that Martin lived on Roxbury Drive. He had three sons and was actually very good friends with New York Senator Irving Ives. So um, it's just it's funny how like little some, speech impediment or something. They, yeah. Or these like details kind of get lost in the translation a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Ryan apparently used to constantly complain about their house and say that it was not as nice as his old house, which is, you know, a mansion on Roxbury Drive in Hollywood. <laughs> and that he would constantly tell his mother he could not live in this squalor. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is amazing. Yes. See that that's the kind of stuff that would just be epic to have happen. I cannot let like I can see Rowan right now coming up to me said, I cannot live in this squalor. And yeah, you've like, got a four year old suck it up. Hollywood You're in West Virginia agent. now, kid. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, so he was actually admitted to the um, University of Virginia's Division of Perceptual Studies program. Um, they looked into, you know, everything he was talking about. He was interviewed a lot. He went through the whole program and everything like that. They ended up tracking down uh, Martin Martin's daughter and they brought her in. And um, when they brought her in and she met Ryan, Ryan really became off put and said that her, her energy had changed. And after that meeting, um, Ryan completely stopped talking about his past life in Hollywood and everything. It's like the the Martin Martin and him just left after meeting his daughter and her energy had changed or something. So um, Dr. Tucker says that this is something that's very common with people who claim to have past lives, that they meet with people from their past life and they start to lose those memories and it kind of fades away after they meet these people from their past lives. Well, and that, that kind of ties back to what I was trying to say earlier, where it's almost like 
unfinished business. This could be like residual energy that's got some kind of unfinished, unresolved issue or or something that's like bounded up and something that kept it here for whatever reason. And then like Ron was saying, these kids might just have the right energy, right frequency, whatever that they're tuned into. And boom, there it is. You have this this intermingling of personalities, so to speak. And because it's not like 100 percent on 100 percent off, like it's just through the day that these parents would experience these random blips where suddenly the kid's like, well, I can't live in this squalor. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Um, like it's not happening all day because that kid would like, you know, not exist anymore. A a mom would look at the kid and just be like, you know, all right, you can't live in this squalor. Fine. Get out. (laughs) But, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where once they have that encounter, once they have that experience with a past loved one or someone that they were constantly referencing during these um, these moments of regression into the other personality, suddenly cease. So um, a friend of mine's mother uh, ran a daycare center in Virginia, and they had a young boy there that started talking about um, he 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 started speaking Hebrew and he would just kind of wake up from naps and speak Hebrew here and there, just a little bit here and there. And they didn't know it was Hebrew at the time because it's a daycare center in rural Virginia. So they're like, okay, what is wrong with this kid? You know? And then finally somebody heard him do it or they brought somebody in and then somebody asked his parents, are your, do you guys go to a Pentecostal church? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and they're like, no, that that's Hebrew. He's speaking Hebrew. And they're like, we don't know Hebrew at all. I mean, and, and there are no, there are very few Jewish people around here, you know. So uh, they started talking to him more and more about, you know, what what's, you know, why are you doing this? And he started all of a sudden, like, coming out with talking about dying in a house fire, seeing the fire all around him. And... Um, So they interviewed him more and more about it, and they got a name out of him. Um, He was admitted to the program at the University of Virginia, and they ended up tracking down the the man because he he said what name what his name was, and they ended up tracking down the brother and sister of this gentleman. And at this point, they're in their seventies. And they come and they speak to the young boy and they are talking with him. They speak to him in Hebrew and he knows what they're saying. Um, they just they they converse. And this brother and sister say this. This is our brother who died, died in a house fire um, in Europe, um, you know, 50, 60 years ago. He died in a house fire. And this is him. I were talking to him right now because they would talk about things that only they knew about. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we do, they they don't know what happened with this kid because he was admitted to this program. And, of course, the people that ran the daycare center had no information about what happened after that. But that was kind of a cool little connection to this. Uh, when I was talking about this earlier with a friend of mine, they're like, well, you know, my mom had a daycare center and they had like a kid who all of a sudden started speaking Hebrew after naps. So I thought that was really cool that you can just all of a sudden speak a language that you don't even know. And that's, that's again, those skills that just show up out of nowhere. Wow. Yes. That's exactly what that is. I mean, it's a hard thing for us here for whatever reason, but uh, this isn't anything. I mean, there's a lot of cultures that this is perfectly normal in like the past life, all that. Right. I mean, look at the Dalai Lama. That's yeah. The Dalai oh, Lama, they put together an entire committee to go look yeah, for it. To find the, the, did you see the latest on the Dalai Lama, by the way? The big no, controversy? I, I don't keep up on the Lama news. Uh, <laughs> it's either. great. I'll just read the headline for you. The spiritual leader has mused that he may return as a woman, but his succession has turned into a political battle. So there's this massive uh, debate going on now uh, with the Dalai Lama. I'm going to link to that, too, because this you can't make up. So, um, basically, um, yeah, I mean, can you, uh, I don't know. I wonder if we can kind of determine who we come back as. That's kind of an interesting thing. And that, I mean, this is all very Dr. Who-ish now, but, um, yeah, yeah. but no, so, it kind of is. I mean, you're talking about a, a, a transfer of 
not you, but the you that's in you, you know, that, that kind of a thing. And that's what these kids have. They have this. We've got some wheel of time stuff going on here. Yeah. yeah right. But the, the ones with the kids, they don't seem to be like chosen. It seems almost to be like at random and like, not necessarily yeah. like how the Dalai Trans- Lama is like, Oh, I might come back as a woman next time. Yeah. The Dalai Lama kind of has, seems to have the ability to, um, uh, Pick and choose. Yeah, pick and choose, kinda, right? I mean, kinda, not really, but kinda. Maybe that's part of elevation of your vibrational energies or something. I don't know. Like I said, the the, the things with the kids just—they're the most, uh, to me, that's the strongest evidence um, for this whole phenomena. I mean, I can talk to a lot of people who say, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I believe in reincarnation." Well, that's cool. I mean. That's nothing wrong with that. You can yeah, there's tons, tons of religions that believe that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But when you get little Toby who comes up to me, you know, and he just learned how to talk, and he's telling me that he flew a, you know, a World War II fighter plane, and is describing the flight panel. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's enough for me. I'm sorry. Good I'm guys. now convinced. I am now convinced. But because you can't explain that to me any other way. Right. Either there was a transfer of knowledge. And it is, you know, it's a paranormal transfer of knowledge, right? I mean, how else is he going to yeah, know it? Or, or we're all living in a simulation. Well, you got that. There's the whole simulated <laughs> universe theory That's, that some yeah, people the, have. The, the simulation Akash- is always a cop out here. It yep, is. Yep. It so the is. The record and the simulation theory, they're always, you know, do one of these braiding things as it goes. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> No, I got nothing. I mean, I was just going to stop at Toby because, you know. Oh. Toby was, he was a World War II fighter pilot. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you could if you could choose who you were in a past life, who would you have been? Ooh, that's Ooh. tough. What's really Ooh. funny is, like, Kelly and I have had this conversation before. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't be, like, a wheat farmer, you know, with, you know. <laughs> wearing rags but you know like a you know a say a famous person oh fam- if i could if i was a famous person from the past which one if i could go reverse yeah past life we're mm. our lives here <laughs> oh let's see probably leaf erickson that'd be fun okay that's odd but i mean i could see that with you yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. Like, all the adventures and all the, you know, just some kind of adventurer. That's what I'd want to be. Some Somebody was out, cool. out exploring, making maps, uh, discovering yeah. new things. That'd be awesome. I mean, any, any type of thing like that's awesome. always, always been something that's always attracted me. And part of why I'm even in the field that we do now is looking for these undiscovered things, looking for answers to these undiscovered truths. It's just something that's always had my interest. That's deep. That is pretty deep. It's deep. <laughs> what about you guys? Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know because. Um, Ron, Ron would be skinny Bob. Jesse, no. what about you? <laughs> skinny Bob. No. No, skin, oh. skinny Bob is actually something. We'll we'll touch on that here in a minute. Okay. No, no. Ron, Ron's trying to not tell us about an actual past life is what he's doing. He's trying to think of one that's not an actual past life. Yeah. He's, he's actually thinking, do I have to be a human in this past life? <laughs> yeah. 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 I was uh, trying to figure that out. So. What are the rules to this hypothetical situation? Mm, hypothetical. Yeah. All right. I, I think Jesse. I can fit into the old like uh, the 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 role of the the Cleopatra role. I'm I, with the eye makeup. I look pretty good rolled up in a rug, you know. <laughs> um, I'm very dramatic. Um, <laughs> she likes to have people around her with giant fans. You I know. do enjoy that. That is a hobby. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'd go for that one. Um, we'll make whole... sure that this year at Wild and Weird Con, you've got somebody that just follows you around and fans you. Yeah, that's where the well, name fan came well, from. Suicide I thing. I, I don't. I, I don't think that was on purpose. I think that was just a, a bit of dr- you know dramatic theater that went a little out of hand. Just, so. Yeah, it just got out of hand. Yeah, I'd fall right <laughs> into that one too. So I see that. All right. Well, so what do you guys think is uh, is going on here? Like, let's let's do our wind down and we'll we'll bump up what next week's episode is going to be. We'll give them a little teaser to to 
you know, hang on to for next week. So I don't what... even know what it's going to be. So I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> yes, excellent. So, so what do you guys think uh, the the whole past life phenomenon? What is your best guess? Because th- it's so hard to nail down. And uh, but, but what would be your best guess is as to what could be happening with this phenomenon? Okay, you want me to go first? Yeah, sure, I'll do it. Okay, so what I think is actually happening here is that we know that matter, energy, all that, you know, energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. It is a transference. We are energy. Our, uh, our not just our minds, but what makes us us. Uh, you know, uh, that's theorized to be the soul. It's the essence. It's whatever that we are. That, if that is transferable, after you know our body is no longer here. And it, you know, zips out into the universe and where it ends up at. Is it possible that it could be intercepted by another, you know, person, another uh, entity that is being born at that time? Is, is that possible? Uh, do we go into the whole possibility of God? We can't deny this. And by God, I don't mean, you know, an, uh, an old man who sits on a cloud with a scepter in his hand. I mean a force, a power, uh, this something that we can't even comprehend that we maybe all be a part of for all we know. Maybe that's the whole point of it. Maybe that this essence of whatever we are just travels and learns and learns and learns. Now, you know, some religions say that once it learns enough, it travels on and and goes to the next uh, existence, right? Like, who knows? Maybe it doesn't. Maybe, maybe we just hang around to, to help others, you know, or maybe we don't hang around to help others. Maybe we just evaporate and, and go and live on some other planet. I don't know. It's a possibility. But I, I think that there's definitely a transferal of energy. And um, I say that because, you know, I've seen things and stuff. No, I say that because <laughs> there's a lot of evidence um, that does suggest that uh, especially when we're dealing with things like out-of-body experiences, astral travel, all that stuff, that this somehow relates, that we may be able to pull in some of those memories from from before or whoever we were. I mean, I don't think we, I think we're just a bunch of people. That's what I'm trying to get at here. And I think that we can't remember all of our people that we are because that would just be too much for us. If that's possible, can you imagine? Can you imagine that you are actually the conglomerate of how many yous? Thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now, take that into consideration and think that what if I could access all 100,000 versions of myself? That's not going to go too well up here. No. Because we do have an individual life right here. Right. But we're also more than just individual life. That's what I'm getting at. Now I'm going to stop preaching because it's going to start sounding like I'm trying to form a cult, and I'm not, guys. Okay, so... (laughs) I'm sorry. All right, Jesse, what do you give us your thoughts? I definitely agree with this transference of energy that Ron was talking about. I I think that that's totally possible and part of what this could be, or this could be some kind of residual haunting of personality um, that these memories may be are sticking in the ether and then they're sticking to these kids and then they finally let go. And then the kids are themselves again, almost like a, residual haunting personality or a possession or something like that, but not nothing so nailed down. I don't think anything is nailed down at this point. Um, It seems to have a characteristic of a lot of different phenomenon to it. So I don't know. Um, I I like the idea that there's this transference of energy and that we can just kind of perpetually go through time and space at all times and, and be never ending. I kind of enjoy that thought. So I like that, Ron. So oh, you, you you can you can send donations, <laughs> and I'll tell you how. No, I'm oh, kidding. We'll put a link in the comments. No, um, just joking, guys. So it it makes all of that really makes a lot of sense. And so this coming from from a perspective of oh, what is, yeah, how is this with you? Because we well, had that's, this conversation yeah, in the that's... past, and it did not go this well. I couldn't imagine you of all people suggesting this topic right? for us to talk right? about. So, well, 
you know, I've actually, I did, I did a lot of study. I did, um, you know, you guys, we, again, everybody knows if you, if you're a new listener, I was a minister for over a decade. Um, so I did a lot of study into the past. Now there are a lot of accounts. The more I looked into this Mm -hmm. of, uh, this was almost like accepted phenomena going way back because there were even mentions between uh, folks that were saying whenever um, Jesus was walking the streets and performing miracles that he was one of the other prophets back to life. You know, that he was one of the other prophets from the Old Testament saying that it's, it's, it's uh, Elijah back back again or, or it's, um, you know, one of the, like I said, one of the other major prophets. And uh, there were so many mentions of that and then they were trying to build temples to him because he was these prophets come back is, is what they were saying. So looking looking at it from that perspective and over the years, because again, last time you and you talked about this, we were, I think, on a road trip. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's where all the good conversations occurred. Mm. You and you were trapped in a car for hours on end. Um, the, it was uh, 2020 uh, and we were... Uh, having this conversation and it, this conversation actually went for a very long time as I recall um, yeah I remember this very well actually I can't forget things it's one of the problems go ahead <laughs> so, so anyway I've got this stink bug hanging out on my microphone right now who's debating on jumping at my face oh man I see that if you see me run just know that's why um, so uh so looking at this phenomena, it, it, it is almost as if th- this was culturally accepted for a long time and then it became not so culturally accepted, mm-hmm. um, at least from a, uh, a Judeo-Christian background. But if you read the, the Hebrew text, there's mentions of it multiple times. So again, the energy aspect, it makes perfect sense that the energy and matter just exists. It, it is part of creation. It moves, and these people are tapping into it in one way, shape, or form. And they're experiencing these memories that were tied and linked to that energy. Uh, it's, it's one of the only things that really just makes sense to try to explain it, because there's, there's actual universal university institutions and, and higher learning institutions that are dedicated to this phenomena. So we can't sit and say, oh, well, it's not real. But one of the things that, that we can can do is rest assured that if you do have a kid that is experiencing this kind of phenomena, it's not always a mental illness. Mm-mm. It's it's not a demonic possession. It's it it is something that you can possibly learn from and grow from and, and develop a better understanding of of everything for that matter. Um don't don't treat your kid like a basket case because this phenomena is actually occurring. We can't explain it, but it's actually occurring. Rest assured, though, it seems to disappear at about five, six years old. <laughs> but there are contact numbers that you can get a hold of. You can reach mm-hmm. out to the Virginia University um, Institute there and, and talk to them. They you know, might take on the case if it's significant enough. But yeah. I'm uh, I'm well, with you guys. Yeah, the energy I mean, thing is the energy thing seems to be like the only explanation. Reality is not what we have been told it is. It's just that simple. Yeah, reality is a human construct. Our our grasp on reality is only as strong as what our concept of it is. There it went. <laughs> and um, well, at least you didn't eat it yet. He's right there. I see him. I see yeah. him. So, uh, so guys, that, that was a really bizarre topic and especially my take coming there at the yeah. end, because I know that kind of shocks Ron a little bit. It does shock me actually. It, um, I'm, I mean, I'm proud of you, I'm, but I'm more uh, open. I'm more open to a lot of these things now after becoming extremely well-versed in other topics. It makes you think when you do this stuff, you know, I know Wayne used to say that, remember he, it he does. came in and he was think. just like, yeah, he it just completely a new way of thinking. Yep. And you can't look at this stuff and just stick to the way that you 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 think. 
you have to really adjust and uh it's called growth boys it's called that's growth. right it's it's called that's exactly rid right of, rid of that stringent belief system you know and and thinking outside the box maybe even creating a new box you know yeah i'm not gonna say too much because you've got a government bug on you right now <laughs> literally no, I really believe that's what that is. <laughs> and I think some of our, our viewers will tell you that that's probably not a real bug. That's a not bug. It's a not bug. Yeah. Not bug. Exactly what it is. Yep. So, all right. So, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us on this episode. We'll let Jess run us out in just a minute. But we have a really fun episode that we've, mm. uh, we've talked about, I know, amongst ourselves off and on. But we are officially making the good, the bad, and the ugly part two. Hoaxes, hijinks, and money grabs, where we are mm, going to talk mm, about mm. some of the wildest hoaxes to plague our community, some of the just grotesque money grabs that you'll see, these gratuitous, give me money, give me money, give me money, uh, that has to do with, hey, look at my Bigfoot in a freezer. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah, man. We're going yeah. to talk about... Oh, Mark Dyer, we're going to talk about all the good stuff there. Wow. Because and these... then afterwards, can people pay us money to go out and shine lasers in the sky? It, as long as we drop flares. All right. <laughs> this will be a good episode. So we're going to be addressing hoaxes, hijinks, and the most notorious money grabs that do plague the paranormal world next week on Wild and Weird Radio. Jesse, take us out. All right, everybody, thank you for watching and listening to Wild and Weird Radio, part of the Wild and Weird family. My name is Jesse, and I run Hellbent Holler. That's at youtube.com slash C slash Hellbent Holler. I'm also on Instagram at Hellbent Jesse. Always go there and find out new information, new news, what's going on in my world, and when I have new videos out. Again, the LBL series is in route. We are working on that. And go and check out Ron Lanham at Lanham Ron on Instagram. Go check out Joe Purdue at Skinwalker Sculpts on Instagram. And then always you can go to wildandweirdwv.com. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and note, turn your notifications on for the Wild and Weird Radio shows and all of the other Wild and Weird Radio and Wild and Weird West Virginia stuff. They have so many things going on. They're always putting stuff out. So make sure you stay attuned to it. Uh, join us over on Facebook for the group and join in the conversation. Send us news articles and let's have a little discussion about everything we see. The episodes always premiere on Friday nights at 8 p.m. You can join in the discussion there with us and sometimes win prizes. Am I correct on that? Oh, yeah. I am. It's happened before, this. yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, coming up, the guys are going to be at, uh, you're going to be at Dave Spink's event yeah the monster con yeah, monster the call yes. in richwood west yes. virginia that's uh that'll be tomorrow if you're listening on friday yep if you listen um, on friday that means you can go and see them if you're in the area at dave spink's wild of weird uh world of weird world of weird so much weird in west virginia that's right. um, so you can go check them out they're gonna be at that um i have no events coming up yet uh so other than that yeah uh thank you for checking us out Again, like, share, and subscribe as usual. I'm sure Joe is going to tell you about what cryptid he's going to murder this week. <laughs> it's that time, kids. Get ready for us. us. This is going to get dark. <laughs> if you guys don't like, share, and subscribe Wild and Weird Radio, we will find out. And we will straight up call the Ghostbusters to come out and find one of these past lives that's cruising around looking for someone to help it find its way out and we will lock this thing away for the rest of eternity and in, in with our proton packs and that's messed up that's pretty dark i told up. you it's gonna get dark so guys messed up so like share and subscribe and always but i'm on it weird so let's uh let's go do this thing <laughs> let's go do the thing uh-oh